As a content creator and an amateurish videographer, I've always entertained the idea of purchasing a gimbal at some point for work, but I've held off for so long mainly because in my mind the gimbal is one of those things where i feel like it's a nice to have but a not not a must have but all that changes today because in front of me here i have the weeble 3s from a brand called ziyun no money was exchanged they don't get to see this video before you guys and so all that stuff right coming from somebody who has never used a gimbal before keep that in mind because a lot of reviewers on youtube they know about gimbals and they've got a lot to compare to, but this is my first ever gimbal. So I'm just gonna tell you my experiences of how I found this gimbal to be. All right, so first up, I just wanna show you guys the kind of package it came in. Okay, this is the bag that it came with. So it's kind of like a duffel shaped bag. It's really tall. It's got like a opening up the top here. And then it's got a second compartment here, which opens up. There's also a little compartment here as well. It's got some straps here that you can cinch tight. And at the back, they actually have a backpack strap. So you can actually carry this around like a backpack or hold it up like a duffel, whatever you want to do. But I thought this was a really nice touch. You could potentially put a camera in this compartment, like a tripod or a gimbal in this compartment. You know, you can be creative with this bag. That's all I'm saying. But it's a nice touch. Along with the gimbal itself, you're also going to get a lot of accessories. So first of all, you're going to get a bag full of different uh, cables. This is a USB-C to uh, different other heads, like a USB-C to USB-C, USB-C to USB-A, blah, blah, blah. You know, every single camera has their own different ports and Ziyun have been kind enough to supply all the necessary cables, no matter which camera you use. It also comes with a base plate that you attach your camera to, and this will then attach onto the gimbal itself. But it also comes with an extension plate, a riser plate, I call it, which you can attach onto the base plate so that if your camera has a larger lens, your camera will sit higher on the base plate so that the lens does not uh, conflict or like touch the base plate itself. Alongside of that, you also have a little pouch here with a little lens holder mount that you can attach to the front of the gimbal. And then you've got your, your other stuff like uh, some threads, some screws that you attach to the base plate and an Allen wrench so that you can assemble everything together. So let's take a look at the Weeble 3S. It's got the uh, pan, the roll and the tilt axis. Each axis can be locked. So it makes balancing the gimbal a lot easier. I definitely found this very useful as a beginner who's never used the gimbal before. Having the ability to just simply lock the axis so that everything stays as it is, as you're trying to balance the camera, it helps. And it definitely reduces the time it takes to balance the camera significantly. Now, one thing that I really like about the Weeble 3S is the fact that you can go from horizontal shooting to vertical shooting in as little time as possible. With the camera still attached to the gimbal, all you need to do is unlatch this plate with the camera still on it, and then turn the camera 90 degrees and then slide it back on, uh, lock the latch in, rebalance the camera a little bit, but then you're good to go. The 3S has a USB-C port at the front, which allows you to connect a uh, follow focus module that you can use for your camera, change the focus or change the, the zoom of your camera lens remotely without having to touch the lens itself. The fill light on the Weeble 3S. It's a very bright light that you can use, say at nighttime when there's not enough available light, you can use this as a last resort. And it does help, uh, especially if you just have one subject in front of you that you want to light, this fill light um, does the job. It does have a variable white balance and it can go from this value to this value. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite useful in a pinch. Taking a look at the rest of the gimbal, it comes with a tripod attachment and I've also got the sling grip attachment that Ziyun sent me as well. So let's disassemble it and see how it looks. So tripod attachment just screws on like this. That's the tripod attachment. It opens up like so, sits nicely on the table. And then here you have the sling grip attachment, which has a locking feature right here that you can lock with. And you basically release that lock. And then there's a button in front here. You push it down and then you can slide the entire gimbal off the attachment here. So you have a wrist rest over here, and then you've got an extra grip extendable as well. So if I twist this and pull it up, you can see it extends 
very, very handy. When you're doing, you know, low down shots, you can hold it like this, or you can carry it up like this, kind of parallel to the gimbal like that. With those two items removed, the gimbal is actually very portable. All right, moving on, we're gonna take a look at the LCD screen on this Weeble 3S. Now you'll notice on either side of the LCD screen, you'll have uh, a few buttons and joysticks and dials. So we're gonna go through those. Starting to the right of the LCD screen, we've got a power button. So when you hold down the power button, it's going to turn on the gimbal. And if you hold the power button again, it's going to turn it off. Below the power button, you've got the menu button, and this is what you'd press to gain access to the menu. And it also functions as a way to get out of the menu. So press it once to enter the menu, uh, press it again to exit the menu, or if you're deeper into the menus, you can go back one level of the menu. Next to the power and menu button is a control dial. And this control dial will control the menu selections. And you can press down on this control dial to select a menu option. Also, and this took me a while to figure it out, the way to turn on the fill light is to hold down this control dial. So moving on to the left side of the LCD screen, you're gonna find a joystick. This joystick will allow you to manually control the movement of the gimbal, uh, the three different axes. Below that is the M button. This allows you to cycle through the different modes of the gimbal. So you can go from pan follow to lock mode to follow mode. And if you double press the M button, you can access even more modes. So by double pressing the M button, you can go into POV mode. Double pressing it again will take you to vortex. And then finally, double pressing it one more time is going to take you into portrait mode. And you can go back to the normal modes by single pressing the M button. Finally, you've got the record button. This record button only works if you have either a Bluetooth connection to your compatible camera, or you have one of those cables that I explained earlier connected from your camera to the gimbal itself. And when you have your camera connected to the gimbal via the cable, it allows you to control certain variables of your camera without touching the camera. So you can just use some of the dials on the gimbal to control those functions. And I'll, I'll touch upon that in just a sec. But basically, it allows you to hit record without hitting the record button on your camera. Moving on to the other side of the gimbal, to, to the opposite side of the LCD screen, you've got the trigger. And then you've also got another dial. Now the trigger has a couple of uses. By single pressing the trigger, you can switch modes to a pre-assigned mode that you set in the menus. So it's, it's like a quick setting, like a quick mode switch. So whatever mode you're in, if you press the trigger, it will instantly switch to that mode regardless of what mode you're in. By double pressing the trigger, you will be able to recenter your camera. Finally, if you triple tap the trigger button, it's going to turn the gimbal around 180 degrees and you can triple press it again to turn it back the other way. But there is one other feature that you can do with the trigger button. Now, if you press and hold the trigger down while you're recording, you'll enter a mode called go mode. And go mode basically allows the gimbal to move really quickly and respond really quickly to any sort of movement you make. So it's great for when a subject is moving really fast and you wanna keep up with the pace and you wanna keep tracking them properly, hold down the trigger and move the gimbal around. And that way you'll be able to track a lot faster. Underneath the trigger is another dial. And this dial is more like a custom function dial. I can assign certain variables to this dial to allow me to remotely control the camera's different variables. Like for instance, right now, I have this dial set to aperture control. So without touching the camera itself, I can control the aperture of my camera. And that way, you know, I don't have to fiddle around with the lens or the, or the rear dial on my camera. You can also set this to shutter speed or ISO. And then depending on your camera, check the compatibility list. You can also do electronic zoom and all that cool stuff as well. On the side of the handle, you're gonna see a USB-C port with a lightning symbol. And that is obviously the charging port. Now I'll just quickly touch on the sling grip attachment that came with the Weeble 3S. So again, really easy to attach. When you get it out of the box, you're going to have to attach this little adapter onto the base of the Weeble 3S body. And then once you've got this adapter on, basically you just need to slide this Weeble 3S onto the sling grip attachment and then lock it in place with the lock on the side. Once it's attached, it'll allow you to get better stability out of this gimbal. So let me show you the two uh, key features 
of the sling grip attachment. So usually when you're holding a gimbal, you'll find that over time, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on your wrist. So having this wrist vest here, I find when I'm holding the gimbal for long periods of time, even if I'm tilting the gimbal forward like this, the wrist rest gives a little bit more support on the wrist itself, allowing me to use the gimbal for longer. Now the other feature of the grip is obviously this extension handle, which uh, allows you to basically hold the gimbal in different ways and also give your gimbal some extra stabilization. Holding the gimbal out in front of you like this, you can either grip onto the handle like so, and then just kind of move it like this. Or if you wanna move the gimbal sideways, you'll just flip the tab, turn the handle so that it is parallel with the gimbal, lock it in place. And then now you've got a way to kind of move the gimbal side to side. And with your hand there, plus the wrist rest, you're gonna get some super, super nice and comfortable stabilization. The other use case for this handle is to go into underslung mode. So when you hold the handle like so, you can turn the gimbal like that and basically you can just hold it down by your side or low to the ground and it'll be a very ergonomic and comfortable holding position. Do I recommend the sling grip attachment? I'd say absolutely 100% yes. Just having that ability to go into underslung mode for better ergonomics and giving you better stability with the uh, additional wrist rest and the swivel um, side grip here. Um, it, just, it just makes handling of the gimbal a much more pleasant experience. You know, if you have a good user experience, it'll make you want to use the gimbal more. So highly recommend it, get it. When it comes to setting up a gimbal, I've never set up a gimbal before. So what I did was I went to YouTube, I searched how to balance a Wibble 3S, checked the first tutorial that popped up and then tried it myself. And I got it done in less than three minutes. If I can do it, you could probably do it too. What I did find a little bit uh, difficult is setting up the motors to kind of work the way I want them to work. I think straight out of the box, the motors are a little bit too reactive for my liking. I like it so that when I turn the gimbal, when I tilt the gimbal, it kind of moves in a more smooth way. So trying to get that to a point where I'm happy with did take some time. And that I think is one of the more complex things that I really do think you should it, trial and error basically. Now in terms of extra features, Ziyun also has an app, I think both on the Apple and the Google Play Store called the ZY Connect app, which allows you to remotely control the, the, the movement of your gimbal without having to use the joystick on the gimbal itself, which is pretty intuitive. So all you need to do is download the app, connect your gimbal to the app using Bluetooth, and then from there, you can control using the on-screen joystick uh, the, the direction in which the gimbal moves. You can also utilize the gyro feature on your mobile phone to kind of control the direction of the gimbal just by moving your phone around. So it comes down to this, the pros and cons. What do I think about the Weeble 3S? Let's talk about the pros. First of all, I really appreciate the form factor of this gimbal. It's deceptively small, but can still hold quite a substantial amount of weight. I also appreciate the well thought out sling grip attachment, which allows for better ergonomics and a more enhanced user experience. And just some other small things like being able to connect the cable from the camera to the gimbal to allow you to remotely control camera functions. Uh, the little fill light on this Weeble 3S, giving you that extra luminance when you're in a pinch and the ability to switch from horizontal to vertical mode without having too much fuss. And finally, I just love the modularity of this gimbal. You can have it as compact as you want with just the gimbal bare bones, or you can attach the tripod, or you can attach everything together and then still have a fully functioning gimbal. Now let's move on to the cons. So the first con has to do with the LCD screen. It's not a touch screen, unfortunately. One thing that I, kind of found a little bit difficult again was trying to get the motors on this to work exactly the way I want. I wanted to make it smooth but it took me a while to get there. So just keep that in mind if you're considering purchasing this gimbal. And one final thing, a few times when I was setting down this gimbal with this entire uh, setup, when I extended the tripod legs out, it didn't sit flat on the uh, table because the uh, wrist rest will get in the way of the tripod leg fully extending. So you are just gonna make sure that you turn the wrist rest up a little bit and then set the tripod down. It's a little bit of an annoyance sometimes when you realize that's the case, but of course, if things can be improved, this is something to consider. So thank you once again for Ziyun for sending me this Weibo 3S. 
If you're thinking about purchasing this gimbal for yourself, definitely check out my description box below. I've got an affiliate link that you can click on. When you purchase through there, you're gonna give me some kickback commission and that's gonna help a brother out greatly. So thank you once again for watching and until next time.